Hey, good morning to you. It's Monday the 13th of February. It's great to see you again. And uh, oh, we had a great weekend at church. It was really, really good. We had Mishek. Uh, he's the head of AOG Church Planting with us. And uh, we had a great day at church. And um, what a great message. What a, what a fantastic guy. What an encouragement to us. And uh, yeah, you can see the service hopefully online on YouTube if you want to hear his message, which was a really brilliant message. A great message for us to hear uh, today. Anyway, um, we're continuing today's devotion in the Gospel of John, chapter 15 and verse 10. And um, this is what it says. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I'll see, read that again. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. So, here we go. If we are to remain, we're told to remain in him. This is all the way through this, this, this chapter. This chapter, it talks about Jesus being the true vine. And he says, I am the true vine, verse 1. I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. Grapevine represents God's love and faithfulness over all the years. It talks about being fruitful. Verse 4 says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Verse 5, yet those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. So why do we remain in him? Well, because we need to remain in him because to be fruitful, remain in him, he will remain in us. Uh, anyone who doesn't remain in me is thrown away. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you, you might ask for anything. So there's provision if we remain in him um, when you and you produce much fruit. And here in verse 10, it says this, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. So Jesus came and said not to abolish the law. The law wasn't to be abolished, but it was to fulfill the law. The Ten Commandments are still important. The law, the commandments rather, are important. Um, the law, the, the, the Pharisees made it something much more. They made it into like little nitty bitty this or this and everything, every jot and dittle and things like this. But the law remains true. And Jesus said, when you obey my commands, you remain in my love. Just as he remained, as he obeyed his father's commands, and he remained in his love. How much more do we need to remain in God's love? How much more do we need to, eh? How's about that? How much more do we need to? So, how do we do that? Well, by doing, for obeying his commandments. What are his commands? Well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul. Love for your neighbour as yourself. That's pretty much what he said. The whole law of the prophets hinges on those two commands. To love God. Love God with everything that we've got. The problem is we often, we live in the world. We say, oh yeah, we love God. We love God. But we, we, don't, we don't practically demonstrate that by the way we live in our lives. We show our love for the world and, and other things other than the things of God. And we can say, oh no, no, we don't. We don't. We do. We do. Particularly in the West, we do because it's it's too easy for us. We, our reliance, our trust is on our paycheck. Our trust is on this. Our trust is in this. Our trust in, in so many other things other than the trust is in God at times. I'm not saying we don't trust in God, but I'm saying we need to trust in him more. We need to obey his commands more to do the things. He says, Jesus said, I only do the things. I only do the things I see the Father doing. I only say the things I hear the Father saying. He had that close relationship, i.e. he remained in his father's love, which meant doing what he said. Those who love me, Jesus said, those who love me, obey my commands. We can't just say, oh yes, we remain in Jesus, but we just live and do what we like, live as we please. That does not work. It does not work. And you might say, yeah, but I'm not doing this, I'm not doing the other. Yeah, but it's, that, you know, you should be past all that as a Christian. If you're a mature Christian, you should be past... The, the old sinful, some of the old sinful ways of life. But it's some of these things, some of the attitudes that are in here that are kind of like, this is like, oh, I want to do this. I want this, you know. I said in church a couple of weeks ago, I felt the Holy Spirit kind of led me to say this. Your opinion on something doesn't count. Your opinion really doesn't count. Doesn't matter and doesn't count. And just for you, neither does mine. The only opinion that counts is his. His opinion is what counts, because what he says goes. What he what he what he says should go. He should be. We should put that into operation. That should be 
our manifesto that should be the way we live our lives. What he says goes. There's not that we're going to be pressed down and crushed because of, you know, with law or because of, <coughs> with, um, what's the word, with control. No. It's for freedom. Christ has set us free. We do these things. Why? Because we love him. Because he, he first loved us. He sent his son Jesus on the cross, paid the price for us, made a way for us. When we gave our lives to him, we have we have been bought with a price. We no longer live, we no longer own ourselves, but Christ belongs, you know, Christ owns us. We're his, and the Bible says that we're his treasured possession. I just struggle with that one at times, but I look at it and say, it's true, we are his treasured possession. Therefore, we need to obey his commands to remain in his love. Why should we remain in his love? Well, we remain in his love, why? So that we can be fruitful. So that we anything we ask, and that's often what perhaps, perhaps why we don't even get what we ask. A because we don't ask, or B because we're not remaining in His love because we're not obeying His commands. There's a bit of a conditional promise here. If we do this, He will do this. If you remain in Me and My words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. If Remain, when you obey my commands, you remain in my love. That suggests if we don't obey his commands, we do not remain in his love. Remain in his love. Remain in his love today. Not just today, but tomorrow, the next day. Be determined to remain in his love just as he obeyed his father's commands and remained in his love. Hope you have a great day today. Listen, take care. God bless. I'll see you again tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen.